I'm Rachel Baumberger with Erdman's Publishing, and I'm here today with Daniel Kirk, who is author of the forthcoming book, A Man Attested by God, The Human Jesus of the Synoptic Gospels? That's right. I got it right. Okay. Well done. <laughs> Welcome, Daniel. Thank you. What led you to write this book? It comes out of, a, I think, a, an ongoing conversation among scholars, and you had something to add to it. Sure. You know, uh, when I was uh, starting to engage the Gospels seriously and, and academically, I was doing so with uh, a larger theological framework in which people play a really significant part in the biblical story. And I was coming at it in part, I confess, with um, some Pauline theology, uh, where Paul's Adam Christology was a really significant component to how I came to understand Paul's theology in seminary. Uh, so when I started reading things that people were saying about the Gospels and doing a lot of work to try to maybe rehabilitate the idea of a divine Jesus, I was like a ship passing the other direction saying, no, these stories are finally making sense to me because I'm not trying to read them with the divine Christ. Like when I, when I stopped trying to read the synoptic gospels through the lens of John uh, and let Jesus there be human, all of a sudden they just started to pop and come alive for me. And I, I wanted to first see if I was just making that up or if that was really a sustainable thing. Uh, and then also to invite other people into seeing this Jesus that I was seeing when I was reading these stories. So there's a, a big what if at the heart of your book um, that where you were looking at the synoptics and you're looking at this description of Jesus um, and what it allows us to uh, believe about him. Mm -hmm. And so tell us what you found in digging through the, the texts. What I found digging through the texts was that what we can believe about Jesus is that he is extraordinary not only in his divinity but also in his humanity and this is something I, I feel is lacking in a lot of both popular I think and scholarly conversations about Jesus where maybe on a more popular level well Jesus is human like us so that he could die for us and yeah, so we have something to do with Jesus humanity for the last chapter and a half of the Gospels but then when we start talking about all the ways that Jesus is is outstanding and excellent. We will look the divine Christ you know, and the, the great power that he brought to the earth and you know as he walked around in this in this human body. And I want to be able to say, actually, God has this awesome vision for what humanity is and can be, and he doesn't give up on it um, when humanity rebels against him. And Jesus is uh, this, as Ire Irenaeus put it, the, the recapitulation of everything that humanity is supposed to be. So I just think that's a, a beautiful, um, a beautiful way into understanding the the life of Jesus. So would you, uh, just for a brief moment, sort of spend a few words placing your work within the context of this of this conversation? There's been a lot mm -hmm. of a lot of really powerful books on the Christology of the Gospels, and where does yours come in? There's been a lot of work that's been done, uh, especially arguing for an, what's been called an early high Christology uh, in, across the New Testament, but in the Gospels as well. So you know, in Larry Hurtado's work, he's argued that Jesus is venerated as only God was venerated um, in Judaism. And um, Richard Balcom in his work has said, you know, there's certain things that Jewish people would only ascribe to God alone. So if Jesus is shown playing this role, he's being identified with God in um, what I think could fairly be called a, a, a proto-Chalcedonian sort of sense. Um, so those are really the major conversation partners in my, as in my head as I'm, as I'm entering into this work. And so as I do, I, what I want to say is, okay, you've, I'm agreeing with this, this whole body of scholarship that says, let's read the, the Gospels from the perspective of the Old Testament and early Judaism. And, but what I'm saying is if we really dig, what we find is that being identified with God is part of what ideal or idealized humans have been since Genesis 1 uh, and in different ways throughout the tradition. So I'm, I'm trying to have the conversation on that same ground, um, but to argue for a different conclusion. So what you're saying is that when, I, when you look through the Synoptic Gospels, what you see is... I think you call it a high human Christology. Right. Can you unpack that term a little bit? Sure. Um, I, I will sometimes say high human Christology. Uh, the, the specific category that I've tried to create is an idealized human Christology. Mm -hmm. 
And um, so high human is, is to say that a lot of times people will talk about high Christology as a divine Christology and low Christology as human Christology. Uh, I don't like that language very much. I, I, I do think that you know, Galilean peasant Christology is a low Christology, right? If that's all we mean when we talk about Jesus being human. But part of what I'm trying to recapture is that idealized human figures are not low uh, in the in sort of the cosmic perspective of scripture and early Judaism. In a good bit of early Judaism, uh, humans are actually thought to be higher in the cosmic hierarchy than angels. So, you know, I, what I want to do is to, to really um, mix up the categories a bit when we start thinking about what does a high Christology mean. I'm saying that an Adam figure or somebody who is fully embodying the, the power of God to rule the world on God's behalf is an exalted person. And Jesus, as one who's resurrected from the dead and enthroned at God's right hand, um, which is part of what happens to his humanity, that, that is an exalted human figure. Mm -hmm. So that's what I mean by high human Christology. Um, this idealized human thing, I've, I've tried to be a little bit more specific and say, okay, idealized humans, this is a way that that Judaism represents people. It talks about certain people as uh, kind of a, a perfect picture of somebody who represents God to humanity or humanity before God. And that often idealized human figures are depicted with um, ascriptions or attributes uh, that otherwise in early Judaism you would reserve for God alone. Mm -hmm. So it's a way to say, yes, these things are about God alone and God can give them to people to share in if God wants to. Indeed, indeed. So how does this, uh, you know, reading of the synoptics, if I can get personal here, tie into your own personal Christology? Um, in terms of like how I, who I think Jesus actually yeah. is? Um, what this does for me is it fills out what has largely been an empty category of Jesus being fully human. Mm -hmm. In the creedal tradition, we talk about Jesus being made like us in every way except for sin. And, um, and so uh, I want to really just walk in that and, 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 and to explore more deeply what, what do I mean by Jesus, this Jesus on these pages being fully human? Mm -hmm. And what does it mean to read these stories as the human Jesus enacting faithful humanity uh, before God? Um, what if that's what's making him different here is that he's be the one who's been faithful to God? So I, I have uh, an a classically orthodox Christology. My Jesus uh, is pre-existent and divine, um, but I think that I don't think that's the story that the Synoptic Gospels is telling us. I think it's telling us the story about the human Jesus, and they give us an opportunity to fill in um, this category of his humanness that, for many of us, I think is lacking. Yeah, yeah. I think oftentimes we go so quickly to confessing Jesus as God and Lord that we gloss over the fact that Jesus was fully human. Mm -hmm. What would it mean for our faith to take Jesus seriously as a, as a complete human being? Oh, I think that there are tremendous ramifications for that. One of the things that happens when we ascribe something to Jesus' deity is that it immediately means it doesn't have anything to do with me. Right, that's, that's other, that's him. He can do that because he's God. Once we've said, well, everything that Jesus does, he does because he's an idealized human figure, and you start plotting that into, yeah, this is what God is doing for all of us, is he's remaking us to be the people God always wanted us to be. All of a sudden, everything Jesus does matters for all of us. And we can't just say he can do that because he's God. We have to say, wow, what does this mean about what God is asking us as his people to do because Jesus is showing us what it means to be the kinds of humans that God wants us to be. Uh, so I think it ends up entailing us in, in the stories much more deeply. And then, you know, maybe even before that, it opens our eyes to see, actually, even in the stories themselves, Jesus is trying to entail the other humans, right? He, he comes around and he's marked by having authority to preach and exorcise demons. And then he calls disciples. And the reason he calls them is so that he can authorize them to preach and exorcise demons. And then he sends them out. And that's what they do. And they heal. So you, know, you get to these points in the story where, like, everything that has summarized Jesus' ministry, he's told his disciples to go do. And then like, he's feeding thousands of people, but 
the first thing he says to his disciples is you give them something to eat. And he doesn't let them off the hook. When he, when he goes to feed them, he gives the disciples the bread and says, now go, you know, feed the people. And they, they do it. So I think that this has tremendous applications for us reading the Jesus story as something that has to impact our understanding of our calling to be the people of God. Well, thank you so much, Daniel, for talking with us today. We're very excited about the book. Thank you. The book, again, is A Man Attested by God.